everybody. Chalky Hagen here again today. I want to talk about something that everybody um, should be good at because God called us to do it. OK. And, you know, of course, you know, I talked to a lot of people and, you know, I said, hey, you read your Bible. And a lot of times I get, well, I should read it more, which we all should, you know. But this topic is very important. But looking and talking to a lot of people and even in my life, you know, before I started, you know, drawing close to the Lord, it was um, almost non-existent. And even when I did do it, I did the wrong way. Didn't even believe what I was saying. And I see a lot of that in a lot of people today when I'm talking to people. And I used to be the same way. And the Lord put it on our heart, and I really, this is a very important uh, thing that God wants all of us to do, okay? And we're going to talk about how to pray, okay? Um, you know, in my early years of, you know, I was being as a you know, baby Christian, you know, I was told to pray, you know, you hear it all the time, make sure you pray, you know, pray to God. Okay, this sounds good, but how, you know? And the Bible talks about it and it talks about it in pretty good detail. And even when it gets into the Lord's Prayer, he says, you know, Father, you know, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. People just, just roll off a tongue and that's it. And I'm like, is that prayer? You know, that's basically, you know, God gave a template of how to pray. But, you know, are you going to pray that when you, you know, over your food? Everybody, let's pray. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, that will be done. And you praying over your food. And you just doing it as a ritual. Really? Or you praying that, you know, when, you know, you know, right before you go to bed, you know, good and all, but let's say, you know, you're in, a, in traffic and the Lord says, you know, they, you know, pray all the time. And some do, you know, give you the middle finger, you know, give you the shoot the bird. Oh, Lord, thy kingdom come that way on earth. Give me something. We rarely, rarely have anybody to teach us how to pray. Okay. And Lord has specifics when they're talking to him. Now, specifics meaning, I'm not talking about there's, you know, this is a certain way, this is a certain way. No, 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 no. Okay? I'm not going to be, you know, a Pharisee Sadducee on this one. You know, not no rituals. But number one is how you come to him. And what do you do when you come to him? That rarely is ever taught. And we're going to talk about that today. Okay? Let's jump into it. Let's turn to James chapter 5. He says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will, not maybe, will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That's a whole lot to unpack, okay? So, first of all, we're going to talk about, he says, is anyone among you suffering? So look at the people you're talking to, suffering. How many people know who you su who's suffering today? A whole lot. Almost everybody as a Christian, okay? If you're not suffering, you're in this good season. Just wait a little longer. Your season's coming, okay? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Are we good at that? You know, we should be good at that, Okay. 14, is one among you sick? So, talking about people sick. How many people you know sick today? Hmm, a lot. 
lots. Okay? Let him call for the elders of the church. Okay? So elder of the church could be a leader of the church. You don't have to be dubbed elder of the church. You don't have to be a title to be an elder. You can be a leader of the church, okay? Um, let him call for the elders of the, elders, elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the, land, in the name of the Lord. Okay? Okay, so anointing oil is involved. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Okay. We have an issue with what is faith. Okay? And if you go back to one of my episodes, faith, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Okay? You cannot please him without faith, but Hebrews chapter 11, hey, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, faith is the substance, substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, okay? So faith is something that you hope for. It's not there. You can't see it yet, but you're hoping that it's going to happen and you believe it's going to happen, so you stand on faith. That's faith, okay? The Lord says, walk by faith, not by sight. So a lot of things, we can't see it, but he requires us to have faith. And in our faith, we believe in the Lord that's going to happen, and he makes it come to pass. Okay? Different when it comes to the world. The world says, I see it when I believe it. Okay, well, take it back. I believe when I see it, yes. The world says, I believe when I see it. We walk as we see it. We believe it first, then we see it. Okay? So I'm going to say it again. The world does, I will believe it when I see it. We walk as, I'm going I'm to believe it first, then I'm going to see it. That's how God calls us to be, okay? All right, so. And notice he said, and the, the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another. Uh-oh. There's another thing. Notice he said, confess your trespasses to one another. Now, you know there's testimonies that if you, don't, if you did something to somebody and you, it was your fault, you were in wrong, and you don't confess your, you know, trespass to that person. Basically, you did that person wrong. Confess up, and the Lord wants you to, so you can get right with that brother, okay? If you don't do that, and you try to come to pray, and you didn't confess that, the Lord ain't going to be hearing that prayer. Matter of fact, let's go to uh, Mark chapter 11. Pause right there, Mark chapter 11. Verse 25, he says... And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Notice he said, before you stand praying, if, that two-letter word, if, that's a condition. Before you pray, if you got anything against anybody, forgive them. So God can forgive you. But if you ain't going to forgive that person, he said, I ain't forgiving you. Guess what? You can forget praying if you got against, something against somebody. So thinking about that, I look back and I'm like, you know what? The miracles and testimonies and the awesome things that God did in the Bible, that's almost absent in the church. And that's why a lot of people in church, leaders especially, don't even believe that stuff still happened today. Well, guess what? Uh, I can start kind of seeing why. A whole lot of people got some issues against somebody and some unforgiveness against somebody, but they're going to pray anyway. God says, I ain't hearing that. You didn't forgive them, I ain't forgiving you. Don't even try to come to me with none of that. Mm. Our God don't play. And the interesting part is, this was, I, I see this. 
I don't, this is, I don't understand this, but at the same time, people just don't, like I said, we don't know how to pray. I've never been taught how to pray until not too long ago, and I used to be the same way. You hear when somebody going through something, and somebody will say, you know, in a text or, you know, some message, and I have a group test, hey, so-and-so, they, you know, fell and, you know, broke some, or, you know, they had a car wreck in the hospital, or they in bad condition, you know, just have everybody pray for them. And then somebody go, throwing up prayers. Really? Think about that. Think about that. Throwing up prayers. How just ain't no reverence in that. Ain't no, I mean, I mean, just throwing up prayers. What is that? What is that? Are you really think God going to answer that? Throwing up prayers. So what do you do when you're throwing up prayers? Lord, help this person. Amen. Really? I hope if, you, if you're doing that and just saying throwing up prayers, please stop that. Because that, that's a, I mean, God requires a whole lot more of that to reach him. You know? And that, that just, that don't even sound right, okay? So, anyway, back to James, all right? So, again, if you got something against somebody, you need to forgive them first before you start praying, all right? Because God ain't answering that. That's a whole lot of people. I used to be one of them. And I, guess what? I got what I got, which is zero, nothing. All right. All right. James 5 again. I want to talk about the prayer of faith. Okay. Now, in a previous episode, I talked about faith and doubt. If you are not praying in faith, God ain't answered that prayer. Remember, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, it is impossible to please him without faith. It's impossible. We say, God can do anything. Mm. He told you, without faith, it's impossible for me to do. I, I, ain't, I ain't pleased with none of that. Faith is the only thing that moves my hand. So if you're not praying in faith, you can forget God answering that prayer again. Well, that's why a lot of times I see God doing things in the church is almost gone. He, very little I hear of miraculous things happening in the church. Okay? So, what is faith? If you praying for somebody, and let's say, again, we talk about the sick, the people suffering, which is, that's a whole lot of people. That's almost 99.99% of people. Okay? Sick and suffering. If you're praying for a person and what it, you pray and ask the Lord to, you know, to save that person or heal them or whatever it is. If somebody asks you, girl, man, you see so-and-so going through that? Man, I, I hope she make it. And you just pray, supposedly supposed to pray in faith that that person say, get saved or be healed. And your comment after you pray Girl, you know, I hope they do too. Shh, man, I don't know. Did you really pray in faith? That ain't faith to me. That ain't faith to God. You just pray, and then all of a sudden, you, I don't know if they're going to make it. You didn't pray in faith. So guess what? That prayer ain't, it's just hit the ceiling, throwing up prayers. Ain't going nowhere. Again, we don't know how to pray, y'all. That's a problem, all right? So, number one, we're supposed to get right with our brother before we stand praying. Number two, pray in faith. Them two automatically knock us out the box. Them two automatically, that bread, prayer hit the ceiling and come back down like a fetty. Boom, hit the ground. Ain't go nowhere. And God all over there is like, Nope, that ain't how you do it. That ain't how you do it. And the Lord like, yep, sure ain't how to do it. Woohoo. The next one. 
It says, oh, verse 16, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Uh-oh. Uh. There are some requirements to get to the hand of the Lord, to get the Lord to hear your prayers. Okay, again, number three. What effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man? Hmm. Let's go to 1 John on this one. It says, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Verse 5, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. There is no sin in Jesus. Verse 6, whoever abides in him does not sin. Abide. Okay. Other translations, they break it down and say practice sinning, because at first I was like, man, no, everybody's sin. It means he who abides in him does not practice sin. That's what I'm talking about. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Verse 7. Here we go. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. I'm saying it again. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. Okay, he is righteous. He just said, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. He is righteous. The Lord is righteous. The Lord has no sin. He said whoever practices no sin, righteousness, is righteous just as he is righteous. I'm going to tell y'all, if you living in sin and practicing sin, now here we go again, brother, everybody, we sin every day, all day. I, wrong mindset. We should do our best to never, ever, ever sin again. Yes, we live in a sinful flesh. Yes, we are tempted. But remember, Jesus was tempted at all points, yet without sin. So we are going to be, he's an example for us to follow, Okay. He says, practice, he who practices righteous, righteous, righteous just as he is righteous, that means no sin. If you are practicing sin, guess what? The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So I guess if you practice sin, you avail little or nothing at all. It's Tough to, we, it, it, requirements to get the hand of God to move on your behalf? Woo, these are huge requirements. You got to be right with your brother. You got to make sure you ain't, you know, don't have no unforgiveness. You have to confess your sins and you got to walk holy before you can actually have God to do great things and answer prayer. Now I'm starting to see why ain't too much prayer happening in the church because it ain't God, you know, God ain't answering his prayers. Therefore, we throw up prayers and we really don't believe the stuff we're praying. And we rarely see God move in the church. And then where, when it is a great move of God, we think it's fake. That devil just got us all kind of ways. Oh, their brother walking out of the wheelchair, oh, they paid somebody to do that. Really? But you say he still do that, but also when you see it, you think it's fake. I would check that. So here we go again. Unbelief, ain't no faith, faith and doubt. So you don't believe and you run, you're walking in sin and you have something against your brother and say, unforgiveness. Boy, it's a lot of prayers that are not getting answered just for off of those three. But guess what? I got a little bit more. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Be anxious for nothing, 
meaning don't worry about anything. That's a command. Worry is sin. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's tough. A lot of worrying going on, and we think it's, uh, everybody worries. God told you not to because guess what? He's in control. If you really trust him, you wouldn't worry. And if you did worry, you would repent like that because worrying, we'll see. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. You know how many times we unthankful? When the last time you prayed, and then after you pray, you thank God? Hmm. Testimony. Man of God, his wife called him while he was in the truck driving, okay? He already had, you know, many times God already answered his prayer. And when she even asked her husband to pray for her, God answered her, his prayer, what she wanted. And she was getting spoiled. She was like, woo-wee. Man, I love him. Hubby, I love when you pray, God. Well, you move the hand of God, you, God. He listened to you doing awesome things. So, hubby driving, and the wife is at the dinner office. And she's digging some dinner stuff down on her teeth, and she to have some pulled out. And the dentist is trying to pull it out and can't. He's having a hard time pulling it out. So, she said, hold on, hold on, doc, let me call my husband. She calls her husband. And husband, you have to pray for me. I need to get this out of my teeth. Okay, I think it was a crown, I forgot what it was. And he said, okay. And remember, had success all this time. She said, oh yeah, we, we, we get stuff done through prayer when he prayed. So, man of God prays in the truck, in the car. Lord, in Jesus' name, I forgive me, I'll repent about my sins in Jesus' name. And then has a, uh, a prayer, and one of the, command, uh, the commandments that he says you can ask for, and it will be done. He says a prayer and says, all right, in Jesus' name, it's done. All right, babe, it's done. It's going to happen. All right, so she hang up. Now, that's faith, though. He already said, it's faith. It's going to be done. Ain't no doubt in that. I mean, that's bold, bold faith. So she said, all right, go ahead, Doc. Do your thing. And the dentist trying to pull it. All right. Still ain't coming out. She called back, hold on, hubby, keep praying. Ain't nothing happening. He said, really? Now, he's surprised that it didn't come out. He, he, remember, he already had much success up to this point. But at this point, it didn't come out. He said, Lord? He said, all right, honey. And then all of a sudden, the Lord put in his heart. You forgot to thank me. Whoa, I never heard that before. Well, I can say never, but I rarely hear that. We supposed to thank God? Hmm. Just read that. And everything, not some things, not most things, and everything by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. Everything. We're supposed to thank him in everything. So every time you pray, you should thank him. So guess what he did? He said, Lord, I know what I did. Father, I repent. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for getting, for having that loot get out of her teeth and the doctor, you're going to pull it, it's going to be easy. Thank you. It's already done. Thank you. And then you start praising the Lord in the car. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You're so awesome. You're so amazing. You're so magnificent. You're so magnificent. You're so wonderful. Guess what? Ring. Babe, guess what? It just fell out of my mouth. Ha! Look at that. The Lord requires thanksgiving just like he said. How many times are we thankful and give him thanks when we pray? Eh. 
I know I used to do zero. Now, I thank them all the time. See, when those testimonies of people get their prayers answered, you need to pay attention. And it lines up with the word. Look at that. I never knew that. Okay. One more. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. That means pray all the time. And in everything, not some things, not, not kind of, eh, most time. Now, in everything, give thanks. Oh, there it goes again. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Look at that. Give thanks. I rarely ever heard that. I used to just, I used to be saying thing. Throw up prayers. Then I said it word by word by. I used to, Lord, no. Thank you. Can you do something, so and so? Ah, thank you. And I was living in sin. I had some unforgiveness. I wasn't being thankful. All that stuff went against my prayer. And guess what I received? Nothing. But ooh, when I started doing the way he told me to do it, I started forgiving everybody from my heart. I started repenting of all the sins I've been doing. Repenting, meaning not, not just confess, but then I'm going to go back and do it again. No, 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 that ain't repenting. Repenting means in your heart, in your mind, you plan to never, ever do that again and turn away from that and go to our God and do what he tell you to do. Rest, repent, okay? You actually repenting. So I was actually repenting, and then I started being thankful, and then I started walking holy as I can, and every time I sin, I repent again. When I started doing that, what? Then some things started lining up, and then God started answering some prayers, and it was awesome. And don't forget, you have to do it in faith with no doubting. If you doubt, again, James chapter 1, oh, let's go there again. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. For he is a double by man, unstable in all his ways. God hates doubts. You can't do nothing. God will not move on your behalf with doubt. He hates doubt. And guess what most people do? I used to do it too. Man, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, I know you answer prayers. You also answer. So I ask you, Lord, to bless that man that just lost his job. Bless him with, you know, with somebody going to call him within like next week and next month. He's going to have a great job, better than he had before. In Jesus' name, amen. Five minutes later, hey, man, you heard about so-and-so lost a job, ain't that sad? Man, shoot, man, that's, that is sad, man. Shoot, I, I hope he find another, man. Shoot, oh, man, he had a good one. Man, shoot, man, I, it sucks what he in now. But you just prayed. That ain't praying in faith. You just basically, your prayer is like, er, cut off. That devil saying, hey, he doubted. it. That ain't working. The accuser is accusing you in front of the Lord saying, See your nugget head son? Look what he just did. He died it. And you said in your word, and God will not go against the word, you said that he who doubts, he is double my name, he ain't receiving nothing from you. That's what you said. And God's saying, that's what I said. And I, God, will, he cannot lie. He cannot go against his word. He said, yeah. So since my word said that, I can't do it. And there we go. That's probably one of the number one things that the Lord, that Satan uses against us to the Lord. The accuser. That number one thing, it's a whole lot of unbelief and doubt in the church. A lot of people don't even hardly pray today because they don't believe prayer. That prayer works. There's some leaders. I talked to a leader the other day. He had, looking for something. Little things. It don't have to be so big. It don't have to be about sickness, disease, pain, suffering. It could be something that's like, you know, 
a, you know, trying to find a parking lot uh, in, a, in a, a, a parking space in a huge parking lot. I did multiple times driving. Lord, in Jesus' name, you are so awesome. You're so wonderful. I ask you, help us find a parking spot close to, you know, the entrance where we were planning to be at. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, it's done. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And I'm just driving around. Lord, you're so awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And all of a sudden, car pulled out right in front of me. <laughs> yes, thank you, Lord. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Rejoicing. The Lord loves that, but I did it his way. Okay? Man of God, pastor, a deacon, one or two, look for something. Hey, brother, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing? Like, you know, I'm trying to find some, some, some small. Like, oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Like, you've been, man, it's somewhere, but man, I've been looking. For, you pray about it? He look at me and goes, <laughs> nah, I didn't pray about it. It's so simple. And I ain't putting the blank because I do it sometimes. And people put me in check. I could be, find my keys. Man, my keys, where are my keys? I'm 15, 20 minutes, turn stuff over. And sometimes my baby girl, my wife, or somebody else, my best friend. Did you pray about it? <sighs> nope, I sure didn't. There's so many times that we put prayer on the back burner, and it's the last thing we do. It should be the very first thing we should do. Okay? And again, those awesome um, commandments that he gave us, you should stand on those commandments. Remember, it's his word that counts, not ours. Okay? One testimony, he talked to a woman, and the woman never, ever repented of her sins and never stood on God's commands. He says, is the word you're going to stand on? She said, what you mean? He's like, well, he has some awesome Command me has some awesome, awesome commandments. And he says, and some promises. What I'm trying to say, promises. There's awesome promises, okay? And promises are, you know, I'm say one, John 15, 7. If your word is me and my word is in you, you can ask for anything and it will be done. If I buy, you know what? Let's go ahead and read that. I'm not going to paraphrase it. John chapter 15, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Not maybe, not uh, sometimes, it shall be. But remember, when you ask, if you, if, if, remember, you have to abide. That means you have to be spending some time with them. Not three, four minutes, you know, the word of the day. All right, thank you, Lord. And then you often don't even talk to the Lord at all for the rest of the day. Ain't abiding in him. You ain't spend no time with the Lord. You're supposed to spend some time with him, get some quiet time with him, talk to him, read the word. That's abiding in him. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, uh-oh, that means you got to study the Bible and know his word. Brother, how many scriptures you know? I know John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. What else? Uh, mm, really? You know one scripture, and it's a whole lot of scriptures. You know one? That ain't his word abiding in you. I'm sorry I let you know that. So... That's one command, that's one promise that you can use if you abide in him and his words abide in you. If that's the case, and you're walking holy before him, and you're doing all the other things I just said, you're going to see some amazing things that happen in your life. Okay? So, the next episode, I just talk about some of the things that will hinder your prayer. There's going to be some more I got to talk about. Okay. But how to pray, make sure you get in the word and go back of what I just talked about 
and make sure all those things line up because that's not my word. That's his word. That's God. That's Jesus' word. Okay? And watch and see what God does for you in your life. Okay? In Jesus' name. God bless.